Welcome to Tech Talk Live, a rundown of technical ideas and topics to help improve your knowledge of all things Comrex and general tech in the world of broadcast and content creation. Here's your host, Chris Crump. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to episode two of Tech Talk Live. I'm Chris, and all of us at Comrex are glad you could join us today. We're streaming live on our Comrex pages on Facebook. There might be an issue there, and I know Julia's working on that. Uh, we're also on LinkedIn and YouTube, and you can send us your questions and comments to be read on the air. We're going to do our best to get those done for you. Today, we're going to be talking to Dan Hewley from Focusrite. We'll talk to Tom Hartnett, who's the Comrex Technical Director with Something Fun and Nerdy. And we're going to learn about HotSwap, which is a, a feature that is on the Access Rack uh, and also on the... Um, uh, BrickLink 2 and BrickLink 3 codecs, and we'll learn about that in just a minute. But hey, in the meantime, why don't we ask a tech? So Comrex customers depend on Comrex techies uh, every day to get the most out of their Comrex products. And um, why is our screen? Oh, I know why, because my I need to do this. First day with the new board. Hey, um, yeah, so Comrex uh, techies help Comrex customers get the most out of their products every day. Today, we're joined by Comrex techie Tony Reyes, who's going to help us demystify the concept of multi streaming for IP audio products, both our BrickLink and Access. Hey, Tony, how's it going? Going pretty good. How are you doing? Best ever, man. So, a lot of times, uh, people uh, are confused about multi-streaming they confuse it with ip multicast and there's a big difference between the two uh and it does have some really specific applications and uh was hoping you could help us figure those out yeah absolutely uh for stl setups with users that are going to send to multiple location uh, multi-streaming is the easiest way to accomplish that uh, by having one source go out to several transmitter sites. Uh, and it's generally set up, it's a profile setting that you have to set within the unit. But once you have that one profile, um, you, you can have several units connect to their home base and use that always connect to function to uh, maintain that connection if power or internet goes down. So um, one of the things that is really important to uh, realize is that multi-streaming will actually help us go to multiple locations at the same time. And really important, especially if you've got maybe a translator you've got to send to, you've got a transmitter you've got to send to. Um, tell us a little bit about that setup. Well, generally you want those transmitter sites to phone home. That way they can utilize the always connect to feature because you can only have one always connect to remote. Uh, but what you would do is actually set up a profile that calls home 
and request um, audio from that uh, home home base uh, without sending any data back to the home base. So, um, you know, uh, rule of thumb is you can decode from one, but you can encode to many. Uh, so simply setting up a profile that just requests the data uh, rather than send data, uh, you can have multiple units connect into that home base. Uh, generally, if you were gonna have the transmitter site call out to home base, you would go into your profile settings. Now, um, if you've ever gone into the profile manager, you'll note that uh, all of the default encoders and profiles that we have there, they cannot be changed. But uh, in order to create a new profile, you can simply just copy an existing profile. Uh, once you set that copy and name it however you'd like, you can then go into individual settings and adjust them the way you would like. Uh, really, there's only one setting uh, that needs to be adjusted, which would be the transmit on off on the local, uh, the local side, right? And that local side is basically saying, once you turn that off, you're basically saying that I'm not going to send you anything. I just want to receive what you have. Uh, but a good rule of thumb when transmitting in an STL format, we usually apply a little bit of a delay cushion just to give your packet some more time. Uh, and then UDP reliability if you're not connecting via crosslock. Uh, and this will apply your forward error correction. Uh, so with those settings in mind and a few minor adjustments, you can have multiple units call the home station. Uh, we have several users out there that definitely push the limits upwards of 10, 13, 14 uh, units connecting into one brick link. Uh, but just note that once you have that many connections, um, you're going to stress the bandwidth a little bit because you're you're doubling up your bandwidth every time. You know, um, so, every, Tony, I know a lot of people, connection. a lot of people are kind of like nervous to get into the profile manager because there's a lot of settings and stuff in there. Um, any mm -hmm. comments or uh, uh, suggestions on how to ease them into um, modifying a profile? I, and then, of course, if you run into any trouble, the techies are here. You give us a buzz and we'll talk you right through it. But, you know, and then, of course, there are, you know, if it's the weekend, uh, it's detailed in the manual as well. Just, you know, control F and then search multi-streaming. It'll take you right to it. And actually, it really only takes a few moments. But one thing you should note that if you do have an active connection and you want to make a profile change, um, it is important that you disconnect, apply that new profile, and then reconnect so that you can put those new settings into effect. Okay, good deal. Tony, thank you very much for joining us today. Tony, the techie, um, appreciate you talking to us about multi-streaming. And if anybody has any questions for techies on how to set up multi-streaming, how to get into the profile manager, you can send them a note at techies at comrex.com. And of course, as Tony mentioned, the manual is an excellent place um, for uh, finding out everything you need to know. There's a very nice section in there on multi-streaming. You can also send us an email at ttl at comrex.com, and we can actually send you that section of the manual so you can check that out. So, Tony, I hope you have a great day and hope you have a great weekend as well. You as well. Have a good weekend. So every uh, Tech Talk Live, we're going to review a feature of the Comrex platform. Unless um, you are um, really up to date on all of the features of the Comrex products, there are some really obscure ones in there. Um, and today we're going to discuss one of the features of our crosslock reliability layer. It's a feature that's called Hot Swap, which provides a hot 4G LTE backup for BrickLink 2 and 3 codecs and also access rack codecs. If you're not familiar with Crosslock, uh, there's a very detailed explanation um, in the manual, or you can also contact us and we'll help you out and learn about them. Um, but the whole idea with Crosslock is it, it enables you to use multiple data connections, bond them together or aggregate them together to basically create more bandwidth. 
in the case of HotSwap, what it's doing is it can actually have the 4G LTE modem. In the case of our BrickLink, you can use our Comrex Connect modem, which is this guy right here. Uh, on the BrickLink 2 and 3, you can plug it into the USB port and set it up as a backup. And we'll show you how to do that right now. So I'm just going to go into my screen share mode here. And we're going to take a look at my Comrex uh, Access Multi-Rack. So to set up HotSwap, the first thing you want to do is you want to go into uh, the toolbox menu. And you get to that by typing in the IP address of your codec forward slash CFG. It brings you into toolbox. And I'm going to go into network admin crosslock settings and then into Ethernet and wireless. So the first thing I want to do is I want to figure out which of my devices is going to be my backup. So right now I have my primary Ethernet port enabled. Oops. Um, and you'll see that I also have a 4G LTE modem in there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go into the settings and I am going to use it with crosslock. So once I've clicked on that, I have a drop down menu and I'm going to put it in to backup mode. And once I've done that, now it's set up to act as a backup. So it means that it's going to be connected with crosslock, um, but it's just going to be sitting there and sending just a little bit of data back and forth with the, um, with the network just to make sure that it's alive. But it's not going to be sending full bandwidth, so it won't chew up your entire data plan. The next thing you want to do is you want to go back um, and you're going to go into crosslock settings. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that redundant transmission is on. Right now, it's defaulted to off, but I'm going to turn redundant transmission on. And then the next thing I want to do is figure out which hot swap indicator I want to send it to. So the nice thing is, if for some reason your primary network goes down, you have the ability to switch over to the 4G LTE modem and have it send you a contact closure. So it could turn on a light uh, or sound an alarm and you can select which one of the contact closure outputs that it connects to. Another nice thing is you can have it um, act either on the local uh, unit that it's transmitting from on the remote, meaning the receive unit back at the studio, or you could do both. So setting those gives you a really nice indication of being able to use hot swap in a very, um, uh, very nice way. It, it, you know, backhoe or a backhoe fade does happen. Uh, we know it does. We read about that stuff in the news almost every day. And uh, hot swap is a great way to make sure that you stay on the air just using a simple 4G LTE modem. So that's hot swap. If you have any questions about how to use hot swap, you can contact techies at comrex.com. And you can also um, send us a note at ttl at comrex.com to find out about how that works. And um, there you have it. So you can also call us at 800-237-1776 and we can talk you through setting up hot swap, but it's a very simple process indeed. So right now, uh, this is the Insider. So there are lots of great tools out there that can be used to enhance Comrex products. And we're always on the lookout for those that we can share with you. And today, we are joined by Dan Hewley from Focusrite. And we're going to discuss a relatively new product called Bowcaster. Dan, how's it going today? Going great. How are you doing, Chris? Best ever. It's Friday. Glad to hear it. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Dan, where are you calling it? I am just outside of Billings, Montana. Wow. Is there snow out there? There is, yeah. Yeah, we got uh, a couple inches overnight, so I have to deal with that a little later today. And are there buffalo roaming as well? <laughs> not not today, no. Uh, maybe some deer, but not buffalo. Oh, okay. Excellent. Not that I've seen. So, so um, we're really kind of um, uh, hip to this product you have called Vocaster. Um, we really like it because we think it's a great complement to two of our products, uh, Opal, which is our WebRTC audio interface, and also Gaggle, which will allow for multiple people to call in. Um, it's a great USB interface. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about um, how it came to be. I mean, we know Focusrite. They make really high-end products for uh, AES67 and Dante, uh, great audio interfaces. Um Tell us a little bit about uh, Vocaster. 
Sure. Uh, and you're, you know, your, your two products, it pairs really well with them, just like you said. Uh, it's made to be easy to use, just like Opal and Gaggle are. Um, so uh, it, was, it was made for folks who aren't audio engineers, who uh, are telling stories or just trying to get their voice recorded or broadcast in higher resolution. So we saw a need uh, in the market for uh, a lower cost podcast product. Um, and that's what we put into development. Um, I was I worked directly with our CFO, um, I'm sorry, CRO and CEO, uh, and we talked this through and got this product into production. I was I was really excited about it. Uh, I spent a couple of years going to all of the different podcast and voiceover shows, speaking to podcasters and learning what the pain points were. And uh, we came out with this really great product. It's called Vocaster. This is the two input version right here, Vocaster 2. Uh, I'm also speaking through one of these, just like this, Vocaster 2 is right in front of me. And it's got some really cool features for folks who um, who don't know what gain is. And there's a button, really cool button uh, right here. Uh, it looks like uh, steps going up. You push that and it sets the gain automatically for you. So it takes the guesswork out of where do I set it? Where do the lights have to be? You know, all the questions that people that don't no audio or intimidated by audio equipment. Uh, it takes the guesswork out of that. You tell them, hit that button for 10 seconds, uh, and, it, and it sets the gain for you. Uh, there's also a really cool mute button, which is great. You know, I have, I have a dog, and she likes to bark. So if that were to happen right now, uh, I could hit that mute button. And well, you wouldn't hear me either, but you wouldn't hear the, the annoying dog barking. Uh, but then it has some really great connectivity uh, options as well. So Vocaster 2, you can connect two microphones, um, two sets of headphones, which was a, a big pain point. A lot of interfaces that had two mic inputs didn't have two headphone outputs. So that's really uh, one of those things that we made sure was in there. Um, also made sure that it had plenty of gain to power any microphone. So there's no need for any cloud lifters or anything like that. Um, Do you have any good user stories of people using it for podcasts or um, just some uh, anecdotal data perhaps? I, I do, yeah. I, I see it going out to all kinds of different places, um, and, and it's great to see on YouTube videos and things like that. It just pops up, you know. I, I see uh, different uh, users using it, and it and it gets really uh, exciting. Uh, one of my favorite podcasts, Nerd On. Uh, I was really excited to uh, partner with them uh, because they love Vocaster, and actually, all six people on the team use it. Uh, they're they're streamers, they're gamers, they're podcasters. They're they're really pushing the limits of audio um, and video uh, at the same time. And to them, uh, Vocaster was the perfect tool. So I I absolutely loved seeing that. Yeah, and in the case of our products, I mean. We like the idea of maybe you've got an expert guest that is going to be on the show on a regular basis. Sure. You can send them a vocaster with a nice pair of Focusrite headphones and maybe a Focusrite yeah. microphone because you guys have the whole package. We do. And um, they can just plug all that stuff together, USB into their computer. Mm -hmm. And with Opal or with um, uh, Gaggle, it's just a matter of selecting um, the vocaster as your mic input and speaker output. It's that simple, isn't it? It is. It's just really easy to use. It's a class compliant device, so you can plug it in and it just works. Uh, it works with iOS as well. So you can plug in directly to a phone, get um, get studio quality phone recorded or broadcast directly into your phone. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, effects processing that's in there? I think you've got compressor gating limiting maybe? We do. It's uh, There's a lot that goes into it, but we also simplified that. It has a, a magic wand button. Uh, as you can, there's, there's two, because there's two channels, there's, it just looks like a magic wand. And it does exactly that. It, it enhances your voice. Right now I'm using the, the broadcast preset. Um, and I like it because it boosts the highs and the lows and scoops the mids just a little bit, uh, adds a little bit of compression and, um, it sounds like that radio voice, uh, with any microphone. So it's, it's kind of cool how it does that. Um, and you can also on the back end, you can change all of those settings. So if you don't like that EQ curve, or if you don't like the amount of compression or the amount, um, or if you don't want to have a filter put on it, you can, you can change all of that. And it's easily, uh, re it's easy to fix that. So it's not something that someone can break and not get back to the beginning. There's a reset button that makes it really easy. Uh, and of course, there's four different presets. There's clean, which is just a bit of compression, uh, bright radio, and I'm forgetting the fourth one. Ah, uh, I should know this, right? Uh, I'm Music? Gonna have to look at, 
No, radio nope. clean warm. There it is. Warm. warm okay. Of course, warm is the last thing on my mind today because it's about five degrees. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. Well, um, normally we would have Tom Hartnett um, in, but it looks like he is probably stuck in traffic. And, you know, that's to be expected. It's New England. It's wintertime. Um, anything interesting in the world of tech that you're interested in that you might consider nerdy? Because usually we would have a nerd alert and we talk about something nerdy. What's something cool that sure. is interesting you? Uh, I think everybody's talking about AI, and I'm just really interested to see where AI goes um, as far as in, in machine learning, things like that. I'm really interested to see where that all goes, because it seems to be moving faster and faster as time progresses, because you have AI helping to, to develop AI at this point. So artificial intelligence is something that's coming in the future that is going to hopefully make all of our lives easier. Is that um, something that's already incorporated in some of your products or? Um... Sure. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Uh, there's a there's a little bit of um, of the the auto gain, for instance, is is a bit of machine learning where you push that button and it actually listens to you and then sets the level based on uh, the loudness and the power how powerful your voice is. So there and there's more 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 to come from Focusrite as well. I, I would keep your eye on 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 us in the next uh, year and year or so. So is that auto learn actually in the Vocaster? It is. So the Vocaster is actually a mixer. Uh, but it's software controlled. So all uh, it has uh, a um, Vocaster hub and it looks just like a digital mixer. So it has all the faders and everything. So all of the different inputs and outputs can be uh, mixed right there or it also multi-tracks. So if you're recording, everything will be on a, a different channel in your in your recording software. All right, we'll play the probably the craziest thing about the Vocaster is the price. Maybe you could tell us about the cost of the Vocaster and the Vocaster 2. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, off the top of my head. That's great. I, I, you, you got me on that one. I should have studied really? for this test. Uh, <laughs> Voca Vocaster one is about 150 bucks. Uh, Vocaster two is 250. Um, I think we're running a promo. Yeah, we have president's day promos going right now, so you can get them, I think a bit cheaper than that. Uh, but then also the studio bundle, uh, the Vocaster one studio, which comes with a microphone, uh, that's 249 and, the Vocaster 2 Studio, which I'm using along with that microphone, is is $399. Again, those are subject to being on sale right now because of President's Day coming up. Right on. And of course, if anybody is interested in looking at the Vocaster, you can go to your favorite Comrex reseller, uh, Broadcast Supply Worldwide, Broadcast General Store, SCMS. Uh, our specialties are many, many of our dealers that you can find at the Comrex website. And uh, Dan knows them all. Um, and they'll sell you a nice little bundle that'll go with Gaggle or Opal. So yep. there you have it. So, Dan, thank you very much for joining us and talking to us about Vocaster. We look forward to working with this product a little bit more. It's a pretty exciting product for us and hopefully for our customers. Uh, hope you have a great weekend and thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, Chris. I appreciate you having me. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, well... We'd like to uh, thank you for joining us on Tech Talk Live. Um, feel free to join us any old time. Oh, we're going to be doing it next month on March 15th at 11 a.m. So be sure to mark your calendars. If you're planning on joining us at NAB, you can find us in the Central Hall, C2234. Don't forget about our uh, free gaggle trial on our website. And that's still going on. So we'd like to thank Tony from Techies today, uh, Dan Hewley from Focusrite. Grace and Julia from Comrex, thank you for all your help with Tech Talk Live today. And a special shout out to Dirk Freeman Jr. from Steelboy with his technical assistance. And thank you for joining us today uh, with your comments on Tech Talk Live. We hope to see you next month. Thanks for joining us on Tech Talk Live. If you have a topic you'd like to hear more about or a question for Ask a Techie, send it to ttl at comrex.com. And be sure to visit Comrex.com for more information on Comrex products and services.